This is a PC case, and this is a graphics card. These days, GPU are just getting chunkier and chunkier. It is not just the size, but it is also getting heavier. That's why they're sacking in the traditional layout. And at the same time, both the CPU and GPU are turning into little furnaces with their power draw in the case. The question is, can we keep them cool and supported without cramping their style? That's where our review of the Silverstone Altar F1 comes in. A case released back in 2021 with the classic Silverstone vertical layout, where the whole build is 90 degree rotated oriented. What they call as the Stack Effect Design ATX Tower. That is, to draw in cooler air from the bottom, which then gets heated by the components. As this air warms up, it becomes lighter and rises through the case and exhausts through the top. Out of the box, I already understand why it was sold for around 300 US dollar when it was released. That is thanks to these thick and solid aluminum panels on all four sizes. Looking at the front panel, you can find a very subtle Silverstone logo just above the ARGB strip. And the two sides are glass panels together with the plastic dust filters for intake and two diffusing covers for optional LED strips at the bottom. And the top contains large cutouts to avoid blocking hot air exhaust. The rear has the same style of the thick aluminum panel. There's an opening to route your external cables because the model and GPU I.O. will now face the top due to the vertical layout. There's also a 120mm opening for the power supply to draw in cool air. To open the case, we just need to find a square button on each side to release the respective panel. And don't worry, the glass panels are still holding a position, so they won't fall down immediately after you press the button. Looking at the interior, as you can see now, is the signature 90 degree rotated layout of Silverstone. The bottom is where the front of the traditional layout case. The K actually comes with three pre-installed 140mm air penetrator fans. The design of the fans are perfect to help focus the airflow inside the case. And you don't want a mesh panel in this case, because then airflow will be pretty messy. An 8cm gap is created below the fans to allow more air getting pulled in. Front I.O. comes with a power button, USB 3.0, combo audio jack, and a USB-C on the top right of the case. With cables being all sleeved back for easier cable management. However, Silverstone somehow decided to put the reset button at the rear, which will be quite difficult to reach in normal daily use. When it comes to storage, you can mount up to 8 drives in total. Two 2.5 inch drives at the back, two 2.5 inch drives at the front next to the power supply shroud. There are also two HDD mounting trays below the power supply bay that could hold additionally two 3.5 inch and two 2.5 inch drives. But these trays also limit your power supply length to 160 mm. But even then, cable management will be quite a headache. All right, that's it for the case detail walkthrough. Let's start out today's build with these components inside the case and test how the firm performs. Now there are a couple of things I want to mention about the choices of some components here. You can definitely mount up to 360 ARO in this case, but two reasons stop me from doing that. One is that mounting it at the top means all the hot air gonna go through it, which is not flavorable for the CPU temperature. Another one is that the radiator and the fans will limit the space at the top for cables to plug in. If you're not using any fan grills, then the cables might heat the fans. Not to mention that it makes plugging the cables later even harder. And that's why I've chosen an air cooler here. Secondly, I picked a DDR4 RAM for this 13700KF build, even though it supports DDR5. The reason being that 13 Gen or 14 Gen Intel CPU might be the last gen you can upgrade to with your old DDR4 RAM. If you have a good pair of DDR4 RAM like the one I have here with Samsung B-Dice, it would still be favorable to go for it for some cost saving. Lastly, for GPU, bear in mind that with the 140 fans installed at the bottom, max length the case can support is up to 334mm. If you have a longer card, you will need to remove one of the fans. And the choices of the GPU will be important as well, because the GPU is going to be mounted top down. If your graphics card does not have anti-gravity heat pipes, the thermals will be disastrous when mounting this way. On my hand, I've tested four cars in total, with the case being traditional ATX position and vertical layout position. Out of them, the MSI 4070 Gaming X Clean has significant thermal impact when mounting top down, which is around 15 degree difference. So yeah, GPU orientation does matter, and make sure to check for your specific GPU before you want to do similar layout. 
That's why I've chosen the Top 4070 Ti here at the end, even though I'm using an MSI motherboard. After setting up the fan curves, I've done a CPU plus GPU stress test to check the overall thermal result. The CPU is getting around 88 degrees, but then you can see that the GPU is so cool even after running 20 minutes of stress test. In gaming performance, the whole PC is just so quiet because the CPU won't have that intensive load. Running games at 1440p max setting for one hour, both CPU and GPU are just folding around 60 to 70. This build is just crushing 2K gaming right now even with DDR4 RAM. So there you have it. The Silverstone Ultra F1 isn't just a case, it's a statement. A statement that says, yes, we can keep getting bigger and hotter, but we gotta be smart about it. It's not perfect, but the vertical layout is still a good solution for the GPU size and heat issue. Thanks for watching everyone. I've also done some other case reviews, so make sure to check out the link and hit the subscribe button if you can.